me to uh, the 101 webinar on tribally approved homes. And what we try to do in this presentation is kind of walk through the entire program so that we have uh, this here for everybody. The goal, though, is to make sure that um, questions that folks have about the program that we have the opportunity to ask them today. So while we're doing this as a presentation, we are also looking for questions as we go um, so that clarity can make so we can make sure that the clarity um, that we are trying to obtain with the program is there as we continue to move it forward. As you all know, um, this is a project that started um, due to uh, legislation. Uh, everybody is very grateful for this program, and I think it's really, really important um, program as we look forward to uh, building and moving here in California, the tribally approved home program. Um, here with me today um, presenting will also um, include um, Rebecca Breen, who's the manager of this program, and she's the 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 person behind trying to get everything off the ground from the state side. Rebecca has worked um, a great deal of the time on getting through our state systems, which aren't the easiest at all, but especially in starting new programs. So want to um, welcome Rebecca to to join me in this conversation as well. You can move on to the next slide. So as we go through the day um, or through this morning, we're going to walk through um, the tribally approved home, the compensation programs, all of the allowable activities, the MOU, the base. Um, you'll see all of that as a part of the PowerPoint. And as Caitlin said, there will also be a recording for this so that anything you need to go back and look at will also be there and available. Next. So, as you all know, the program was designed to allow tribes to develop um, tribally approved homes for children um, when they are needed, when they need to be removed from parents' homes. Needless to say, the goal is to keep kids and families connected and keep them with their family as much as possible. But more importantly, when that's not possible, having a home that has and mirrors that child's cultural, social um, connection is really important. Um, and that they do not um, have to go through, families do not have to go through our resource family approval process. So that's um, the, the goal. Next slide. So the overall program, as you know, was developed, as I said, through the legislature, it authorized um, funding for the program. It provides tribes who join the um, process with funding to recruit and approve homes through the standards of that tribe. There are requirements um, specific to the approval process that have to be met, and that approval process really requirement is the background clearance. The federal government has a background clearance requirements, and those are all a part of the, the process that we are aware of. Um, but there are also California background clearance that um, can be addressed through the process that allow for relatives, families to have funding, even if they don't meet the federal requirements. And that is legislation that was passed in the last budget cycle, SB 354. That's a major part of not only the talk compensation program, but are the RFA program. And so we have that ability. And as you all are looking at uh, TA homes, that is an opportunity to look at whether a home is still safe for a child, even if there was a non-exemptable crime originally involved with that child. So working with the counties, that is something that tribes will be able to do as they build their tribally approved homes. Next slide. 
Rebecca. So, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? You're breaking up a lot. Sorry. You're breaking up a lot. Oh, no. Okay. You could try turning um, your camera off. That you, might help. Okay. Um, um, okay. All right. Is that better? Can you hear me better? That is better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, hello. And I apologize for turning the camera off. It sounds like I'm very glitchy this morning. So, um, as Valerie introduced me, my name is Rebecca Breen, and I'm the manager of the Foster Caregiver Policy and Support Unit who oversees. Um, the TA compensation program, and I'm just going to go over some of the allowable activities. Um, that are associated with recruiting and approving of the TAs, and I'm just going to briefly go over them. They're on the on the screen here, but it's still pretty and hard to hear you. Here, Okay. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? So I can hear you now, but I was not able to hear most of anything that you just said outside of your introduction. It started to break up right away after that. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm not sure what I can do to solve that. Um, it's, it's sounding a bit clearer now. Ahead. I'll just try to stay very clear. So, okay. um, <laughs> so what I was trying to speak about is the allowable activities, and on the screen here we have them. That some of the allowable activities are developing, implementing the tribe's process for licensing and improving and regulating the TAS. Another one is for the processing and conducting the criminal background checks, which Val just recently went um, went over or briefly went over. Um, can you go to the next screen? So it, um, some of the allowable activities and um, for activities are included, but these are not limited to. Um, we do have tribes reaching out to us asking, and we are, we welcome that we welcome any questions. Tribes, if you have specific questions about whether or not their activities are reaching out to us through the Tom mailbox, and um, we can specifically answer those questions if you are concerned about or have questions about whether or not they're. Some means to implement licensing and approval of the programs, training and outreach, support for the caregivers with the placements to increase the retention, and then developing new and improved methods for procedures for collecting and analyzing the data. Can you go to the next screen, please? Examples that um, for allowable activities are addressing the staffing needs. To implement the homes and to carry out any administrative functions. And these can include salaries or portion of duties, renting office space that to conduct the TA related businesses. Um, some tribes are asking if they can purchase cars to to um, to assist with this and we're approving that. Supports for cares with placements to increase retention, including but not limited to finding and developing resources. We've had questions about whether or not they can purchase washers and dryers, and that is fine because if we have a home that's taking on a sibling set or just would be help them to retain the placement with a new washer and dryer, that is acceptable. And then and the last one is holding recruitment fairs and events. The next slide will be um, TA annual timelines and due dates, and Val, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. Before I, we go to the timelines, any questions folks have, I want to um, make sure that we don't get too far off without um, answering questions. And um, Caitlin, do you have it so that folks can just bring themselves off of mute and speak up? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so anybody, um, you're welcome to just jump in if you have any questions, if it's easier to raise your hand or put it in the chat, we can also address them that way, whatever works best for you. Looks like we have a question, a hand raised by Christina. Go 
Go ahead, Christina. Sorry, forgot to unmute. Christina, I'll be free to hone your new tribe. Um, so my question is, so for the salary, so if I have someone that is working as a clerk in our health office, but also assists ICWA, so when they're doing ICWA activities, we can do partial of their salary for that program? Is that that's that what I'm understanding? Correct. Yes, that's absolutely correct. You would do the based on the percentage of time for each program. And the time, the percentage of time that they're doing activities for TA would be claimable for a TA. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Valerie, it looks like there's another question in the chat. Uh, Rosemary, okay. Rosemary asked, um, or Rosemary, apologies, asked, are there restrictions on the types of vehicles that can be purchased, such as used versus new versus leased? Uh, as far as I know, there is no restriction on those. If there are something uh, in government code, we will definitely look it up and make sure we give you a more more thorough answer. But I've not heard that as an issue in at all. Anything else? Other questions? Okay, so let's move on to the timelines and annual due dates. So letters of interest are due the 30th of each um, 30th of June each year. That's the letter of interest um, to make sure that we have things moving forward. Um, we also have to have um, the MOUs and the exhibits um, completed for all new tribes for tribes who already have agreements, there is nothing that needs to be done on an annual basis for you all. This is only the, the letter of interest, the MOU exhibits are only for new tribes that are starting the process, okay? So you don't have to do it again every year to, to say I'm doing it. Um, the letter of interest just lets us know that you're continuing to do that, but you do not need to put in a 204, a new exhibit, or anything of that nature. You will need to do an annual progress report. And our um, plan for that is to have the um, web uh, link available for you all to complete your, your um, progress reports on. Uh, that is a part of the process. It is a part of our legislative um, requirement and we will make sure that we have and can provide that in a way that is the easiest way to capture information for you all so that we can report back to uh, the legislature on how the program is doing. Any questions on timelines or anything along those lines? Valerie, there was a question in the chat. It says, new to TA, the tribe currently has an MOU for other CDSS funding. So if a tribe has um, the base MOU, you do not need to do another um, base MOU, but you will need to um, complete the exhibit and the, TO, the uh, STD 204 for that purpose. Um, so we will have to have those when you opt in. Um, the funding timeline um, when you do that will be the determination of when the allocation and, and money will get to you. Um, we have a process for all of these where we effectively have to have a deadline or a timeline, and I think the agreed upon timelines um, that were done we're at the end of the uh, cycle year to make sure that we could then get out. Like this year, we had some delays. Um, so we had tribes that opted in. We were able to get allocation letters out. I think there's um, quite a few that got out for this year. Uh, we need to be able to make sure the tribes who opt in have their allocation and then be able to reallocate funds um timely so that they can spend those as well so that's part of why um interest and um letters are there 
exhibits have to be completed and the SDD 204 has to be completed before our agency can move the process along to get you into the treasurer's payment process. Um, and Rebecca can talk a little bit more about that. Anything Thank you, Valerie. Else? You're welcome. We have two more questions that came up in the chat. Uh, okay. The first one, it says, do you have a standard example of a letter of interest? Yes, we can send you some of those. And then the second one says, when will progress report, when will the progress report link be made available? Um, Rebecca will be able to give me some ideas on what the timelines are. Um, we typically try to have them up at least 30 days before the progress report is due so that folks have enough time to have them in by the deadline. That's a pretty typical process. And uh, we will make sure that everything from today's information is also included so that if we can send out the link and it's already been created, we would do that. Any other questions? Oh. Okay, next slide. So there are two ways for you to do the letter of interest. And one is on a letterhead stating that you intend to um, opt in and you send that in to us. And then the second way is to send an email. So again, this whole slide deck will be sent to everybody on this call and will be available, I assume on our website, um, Caitlin is our plan so that it's there for folks to be able to come back and look, look at. Next slide. Um, real quick, Valerie, we had one more question come in and then I'll move to the next slide. Um, okay. Cheryl asked, do you allow for a budget modification? Say I wanted to set aside funds for background checks. Budget modifications. So we don't typically have to do budget modifications. Um, are we talking an increase in the budget, reduction in the budget, or just a change of how you're using money? So that, that would be depending upon what you're doing. I would also encourage all of you who are doing background checks to also apply um, for another funding stream that we have. It's based on AB or SB 1460 where the department had put money aside for you to do your own background checks and background clearances where the department um, would pay for a particular number in addition to your live scan machine and all of the um, clearance or the service warranties on that live scan machine. So hopefully most of the tribes that are signing up for TA are also signing up with the Department of Justice to make sure that they can do their own live scanning. Um, Rebecca can also send that and we will include in the link the um, information for doing the background check clearance and funding for that. That is a separate funding from the TAF program. So I wanna make sure folks are aware that that does exist. Valerie, in response to that in the chat, it says, yes, we have our own. Please send if I am missing something. Say that again. Um, in the chat, Cheryl said, yes, we have our own. Please send if I am missing something. Okay. Okay. Definitely. So, Cheryl, the question is, are you guys getting reimbursed by us for those um, clearances that you're doing for your top program? Because it covers your TAW staff as well as your TAW program. Does not at this time. In the okay. Chat. Yeah, that would be an important factor. Always looking for more ways to support um, you all as we continue to move forward. Okay. Rebecca, are you back? 
I hope I'm back. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I'm back. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so I just wanted to um, go back to the letter of interest. And um, they mentioned about an example, and just really quickly, some examples are some of the letter of interest we received are really very simple, just a. You're starting yeah, to break up again. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to go off video. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, I just was going to quick example. Quick example of the letter of interest was just a simple email to us letting letting us know that you want to opt in. And of course, if you want examples of those, um, we can send them out. But it's just a very simple email saying that such and such tribe would like to opt in to this program, and then we'll we can take it from there. So next slide. So as we're just going to go through some more detail about the required documents, and as Valerie mentioned, um, we're going to we're going to need a base MOU. We meaning the, um, this um, CDSS is going to need a base MOU in the top exhibit for sure. So we have that versus the base MOU. And it sounds like for those of you who already have a, an MOU with another program, that will serve as well. And then there will be specific exhibit for each fund program. And this exhibit we're going to be speaking of is the TAW exhibit. We call it Exhibit B. And it will be attached to. MOU. And we'll go over that more detail and and respond. Perfect timing. Because I was going to say to you that we lost you again. <laughs> so, um, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. what's happening. It's okay. all good. Um, Valerie, we had one question that came back up in the chat about the LOI. I just wanted mm -hmm. to flag before we moved on further. Whitney asked, how soon can we start sending in LOI for the 2425 TAW funding? Anytime you're ready. So, if you want to send it in today, tomorrow, Next week, we are primed to receive that. You would send it to the Tom mailbox. Um, they will go from there. It's needless to say, the sooner the better, um, because it helps us get through the process. Okay. So, um, as you all know, that have done the MOU. Um, the MOU is the signed agreement between CDSS and the tribe, and it consists of the uh, essentially eight components, the purpose, the parties, responsibilities, disputes, um, terms, termination, liability, sovereignty, um, sovereign immunity, and audits. Next slide. This is that base MOU that we talked about. Um, in the process, the draft MOU will be sent to the tribes for review and approval um, from the TA mailbox. The final version, so we don't we send you one for you to look at, have comments on, put feedback to. That is not the final sign one that you need to sign. So to be clear, it's making sure that you have what that sample MOU would look like. Um, the final version for signature will be sent out from our grants unit, our, and it's the grants MOU intake at DSS. The MOU must be signed by the tribe's um, authorized signer and um, make sure that the, the uh, emails are able to come in. Uh, we have found that some folks' firewalls have stopped uh, these and they go into their spam box. So we want to make sure folks have that information for the MOU. Anything on this one, Caitlin? No? Okay. Moving on to Exhibit B. Um, Rebecca was going to um, do this. 
and we'll have her um, chime in as need be, but since I'll, her, I can... um, <laughs> you think... <laughs> I'll, I'll stay on too. Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay, just give me a, I guess, I don't know, a flag or something if you can't hear me. So um, I'm really conscious about what I want to say, but I'm going to say that I'm just going to be out. So um, Zibit, 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 we call it here as, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so um, if we're speaking with you, meaning we're meeting um, my unit, we um, will often ask about Exhibit B. Well, we're, when we're referring to Exhibit B, we're specifically talking about the um, TA exhibit. So um, those words are often used interchangeable with us. So Exhibit B is comprised of, of several elements, and it's just basically the contract portion or the detailed contract portion for this funding. And it has to do with the, it will go over the purpose of the program. It will go over the background. It will talk about the parties of the response, the responsible parties. It will, um, it will include the representative representatives from the project, as well as the tribe. It will discuss the fiscal provisions pretty detailed on the, that part. It will talk about how the funds would be administered and also the term of the funding. Next slide. Hoping you can all still hear me. Um, so we will, as um, Valerie explained, this will be as this comes as the same as the MOU, and we'll send out the MO. We'll send this with the MOU out to the tribes for review, usually after tribal consult formal tribal consultation. But the final version for your signature will come from the grants MOU intake, and I think that this may be kind of confusing because you're dealing both with the taught. TA unit as well as the grants MOU intake unit, and that is really just how the process needs to this needs to work. The final version really will come from the grants MOU intake unit and needs to go back to the grants MOU intake unit, and then they notify us that it's been that the um, that the documents have been signed, and it must be signed by very important and also we want to make sure that the emails are blocked the email firewall so nothing is um, returned to us and that we can um that everything can be received time in a timely manner next slide is mine too This is the ST, STD 204. Valerie also mentioned the STD 204. This is a very important document. Um, this one allows us to allow CDSS to pay the tribes. So it's also called the payee data record form and is required to receive payments. And this form will be sent once it's completed to the TA mailbox. And we request that sections one through five to be completed by the tribe. And then section six is to be will be completed by um, CDSS, and then we'll submit it to the grants payment uh, grants management unit. We just want to highlight section five. If there's ever a different payee, this form needs to be redone, so we can um, or resubmitted, so we can determine that the correct um, payee is paid. So that. Um, that sections can needs to be updated on a regular basis if the payees change. Next slide. So Rebecca, when might the payee change? When have you seen that happen? Example, can you give folks? You know, I, um, it'll it depends on the tribe. Sometimes we'll uh, if the positions have changed. If we have, if someone's left or has a new position, um, if someone is left, um, really that's been the main. If someone we have it. Um, yeah. If they've left that position, or if the um, we won't really know the details on that, but that's highlight when we get notified, and also for our contact um, when if we have anyone who's running these programs or oversees these programs, we really want to encourage um, encourage the tribes to let us know if those positions have have changed because we'll find that we're continuing to send emails out to the incorrect person, and then there's a delay. Um, and getting um, getting the information out to the correct person. Thank you. So, um, next slide. 
Now this is regarding, again, we mentioned the allocation letters earlier. So the allocation letters, and this is the allocation is, will be determined, the methodology is determined by a formal consultant consultation with the troops. And as of right now, it's $75,000 is allocated for activities. And um, these allo the allocation letters have already gone out and they will send from an email from, we, um, we call it the, um, Allocations unit, but it's the CDSS children and adult programs allocation unit. So all of those letters come from the allocations unit and they have their own process on getting these letters out to the tribes. And on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see an example of what that letter looked like. And if you have any questions in regards to your allocation letters, you can contact the emails there, but you can always really want to encourage the tribes to always reach out to our Tom mailbox because we can be the, in, the go between and get any questions answered and contact them directly um, on the tribe's behalf. So um, if you don't want to remember all of the email addresses, that's fine. We can be the go, be, we'll be the go between and, um, and make sure that the process is seamless. Next slide. This is the invoice template. And from my understanding, all of the welcome packets have already gone out to the tribes. And so you would have, we were individually sending those for the tribes that requested them. Um, some of the tribes received these prior to the welcome packets. However, these did all go out on Friday, I believe, Thursday or Friday. And this is what the invoice will look like. You can start sending these into us and the, the, Unfortunately, the internal process for payment has been very timely. It's just the internal state process and um, my unit has worked very hard on getting these um, invoices and the um, numbers of that it's very and for us, um, as well as I know the tribes. So we finally feel like we're coming to the end of it and you can send in the, these templates, but this is what it will look like on the right hand side. I just want to highlight where it says, um, choose one that will be a drop down and we will, we will meet individually do one on ones. So if every slide like we'll, we'll walk you through exactly what you need to do with this. So you can reach out. I'll have my staff, but again, put the Tom mailbox in the you guys can please do that and we will hand walk our hand hold the entire process. So the choose one again, as I want to highlight on the right hand side, the choose one will have a list of the allowable activities and for your ease and for it to make it easy on so you're not having to fill that in. And again, you're breaking up Rebecca. again, Rebecca. Um, oh, sorry. I think I moved my hand. Let me turn off my turn off my video. It's okay. So Rebecca, I think what I heard you say was just that um, on this right hand or my right hand side, the side that has the choose one for allowable services and supports, that will have different options for the tribes to choose. Yes. And if they have any questions or um, need some support on that, that they could always reach out to your team and you can have one on ones or or kind of walk them through that process. Yes. Yes, sorry. Yes, I'm going to okay. apologize for the breaking up. No yes. problem. Um, I'm, so I'm going to just put the. I'm going to okay. just put I'm the email in the chat that. for everybody, and then I'll pass it to Valerie. Okay, so as we move forward in the process, the invoicing you saw the the sample of. Um, as a part of the process, though, um, the tribes can request advances up to 25%. Um, and in order to do that, you have to include the tribe's MOU number, uh, which is located on the right corner of the uh, agreement, and ensure that the tribe's chairperson or authorized signature signs that document in a request for that advance. And then submit that back. Go ahead to the next slide and submit that back to us to the top mailbox um and the final part of the process is the progress report that we mentioned at the very beginning um that we have to have that progress report templates are in development right now um they can be submitted via um 
the email addresses to the ta at dss.ca.gov, but we will also have a web link for you all to put the information in. And Rebecca's team will work on getting that in um, at the beginning of the uh, fiscal year of the, the fiscal year at the end of, in other words, in July, uh, so that it's there and available for you all to have and put into that process. Next slide, unless there's questions. Sorry, it does look like we have one question that came in on um, the previous invoice slides that Rebecca shared. Would you like to go back and do that or finish up this? This um, section first, we can go back then. Okay, let me go back. I believe this is it. Liz asked um, on advances. Oh, actually, sorry, there's two questions from Liz. First is um, for allowable services and supports. If the tribe has their own program. These may not show up on the choose one, correct? Is that accurate? It could be, but it is likely going to fit because they're kind of general areas of um, choosing one. So one may be uh, training. So that's a choose one big general pot. Uh, let us know though, if there's a problem and we can help uh, fix that piece and add to it. Right, great. Thanks, Valerie. Um, the next question is on advances, so I can move forward to that slide. It says okay. you are talking about the 2425 program as the 2223 and 2324 is a reimbursable program, correct? Yeah, at any point in the process, there were supposed to be advances, um, but of course we're behind the the process now. Um, so that the funding comes out um, in advance of that fiscal year. So in other words, yes, Liz, we're talking about 24, 25, where you could get an advance um, rather than reimbursement because we've gone so far through this, this fiscal year cycle. Thank you, Valerie. She just put okay in the chat. So she's got okay. those. Yeah. And I don't see any other hands, so I will go back to where we were. Okay. We're on progress reports. Um, the progress report requirements are in the statute. Um, so, you know, the progress reports have to include description of how you administered the funds, description of the fund, how the funds were used to meet the staffing um, pieces, the program, the recruitment, retention, training. Uh, the number of homes that you actually brought into your process for the year, number of vis existing um, homes uh, that the tribe already had, and description of uh, what you're planning to do and what your activities are for uh, that year. And, and needless to say, also what's helpful is when you're able to say, here's what we're also planning for, for next year. All of that helps. And all of that uh, is something that helps as we get questions from the legislature on the program. Our overall goal is to help the legislature know how well and how much the funding is needed to help tribes be able to bring families in and be able to support uh, their children. So as much information as tribes are able to provide for us, uh, the better. All of that would be shared with legislature. Um, so whatever you all um, can do with that, really, really helpful. Next slide or any questions on that? Um, we just had a question from Angie in the chat. Are the available sample letters located on the CDSS website? Available sample letters. I'm not sure I know what the sample letters are. Angie, would you be able to put in chat, or if you're comfortable coming off mute, just giving a bit more context as to which letters you're looking for. Is it like the invoice? I'll go back on some of the slides, some of the invoices and the advances. Okay. So um, the advanced templates. So this one shown on this slide, as well as I'll go back here. Um, these invoice templates uh, were a part of the welcome packets that went out last week. So there should be templates in there, but if there are, 
Rebecca, please correct me if I'm wrong. If there's anything that's missing or if you have any specific questions, I think you could reach out to the TA um, email and their team could um, support you with any questions you have. All right, I'll get us back to where we were. Okay. I think for the most part, um, other updates and processes, as you already heard a couple of times, the uh, welcome packets were sent out. Uh, they included the uh, all tribal letter, the frequently asked questions, the um, invoice template guide, travel invoices, as well as advancement requests. So all the documents were there as a part of that um, that was sent out. Um, so I think that's it. We've given you the email address several times. You're probably sick of hearing it, but you know, we just want to make sure you guys know how to reach us. Um, any other questions on this section, Caitlin? I'd like to reiterate that we really will um, meet one on one with um, the tribes and go over each. We'll go over this um, presentation again. We'll go. For each of the invoices, we're also here for the tribes um, to support and um, any way we can. And I just want to go back, if I'm not glitchy, on the progress reports. Um, although there's very specific requirements that will be on the progress reports, we're really trying to be very mindful to make it very easy for the tribes to give us this information. So, um, if you have any input. When you, when you see the report, see the parts that you think an iteration would be helpful, please let us know that and we'll take care of that. Consider. But as Valerie mentioned, this will be web based um, as that was a request. And um, we're really trying to make it very, a very submittal. So, a very so please give us anything further. That's not. Thank you, Rebecca. It looks like we have another question in the chat. Uh, Karen said, I feel like this is very late. Is there an update on whether the deadline to spend has been extended? So are we, I'm not clear what we're talking about deadline to spend. There is an annual allocation. Once a tribe has opted in, they get their allocation that funding is for that fiscal year. So 23, 24, 24, 25, that 24, 25 is coming up. That is not a part of we're in the 23, 24 fiscal year. So um, what the funding that was reallocated, that was for 22, 23. Um, so give me more on your question. Karen just said, I'll check in with Donna. Okay. Okay. And um, Karen, feel free if you want to put anything else in the chat here or um, come off mute, we could talk a bit further. We also have a comment um, from Josh saying, I have invoice reference guide. However, I do not have email of invoice templates. So um, if that was not within the welcome packet, that was an error because the invoice templates were supposed to be in there with the ref invoice reference guide, both of those were supposed to be in there. So, um, Rebecca, could we have Jay Lena just follow up with Josh and just to touch bases and make sure that he has all the documents needed? Yeah, yes, we will. And if there was an oversight, okay. I apologize for that. I'm not sure why that, that wouldn't be in there. I, might, I want to just go back to Karen's question. I think that might be, and Karen, please correct that might be a question left. And I think that you may have asked that during office hours on Friday. So um, I think that's still um oh mine too, Karen. My <laughs> my service is bad too. Um so yeah, so it was a question that she had from office hours. So I believe that Diana was following up with that um specifically for you. So I just wanted to let you know that that's being considered. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rebecca. We have one more question from Laura. Uh, were the welcome packets that just went out for 23 slash 24? Were there any, I think, if I recall correctly, they didn't have a specificity on year. They were essentially the entire packets for the entire timeline for both existing uh, entities that have uh, existing tribes that have agreements and tribes who have not. The goal is really of all the ones who have opted in, here's your welcome packet because you've opted in. Is that correct? And how we did it. That was my understanding as well, Valerie. Okay. Okay. And our future goal is that any new tribe that opts in will send out that welcome packet. So I see another question in the chat that just came in and it says, I think Wilton has the same question since our 1st allocation letter in November 23. But I will send the spending question. So, I guess this is the same question, Rebecca that came up during your office hours. Is that what you were saying? I'm unfamiliar with this question. I don't know if this has the okay. same one that has to do with Karen's. Karen's question had to do whether or not um, for an extension timeline. Okay. I'm not familiar not the with claiming back for the Cheryl last could, year. Um, okay. So Cheryl, um, we'll need you either to come off a meet mute or send us some more uh, information to be able to better answer your question. Uh, in the meantime, you can move on to the next slide after this. We have some resources in the links here that will also help folks as they continue to move forward with the top program. It really gives you um, uh, the links to the welfare and institutions code. That's WIC 10553. Point one two, which really um, puts in the funding for tribal aspects, as well as 179 legislation, health and safety code. Um, we try to put in here as many resource links that we had available. Go on to your next one. So that um, anytime you thought of the tribe, the tribally approved homes, everything related to that with links we're here and available for you all. And that is the end of our slides. Questions, general questions, overall questions. Valerie, this is Liz. Finally. Sorry, I, I was handling a court call and other phone calls into the office. So I've just been following along and uh -huh. checking on chat and everything. Um, hey, listen, I was wondering on some of the links that you just posted as additional resources. Um, yes. Has there been an update to the ACL 2233? Which one is 2233, Liz? Um, it's the health and safe, or it's the Senate Bill 354, um, which also goes through all of the background emergency placements, um, simplified exemptions, um, tribally approved home criminal background checks. It's right. It's, it's multiple no, pages, there, but I don't know if there was an update to it. There's no update to it yet. There was some legislation that they had proposed that uh, was going to, we thought was moving forward, but then got killed. But that is an opportunity and it is a, a, a way for you all to look at uh, when you have a case uh, of a non-exemptable 
yeah. that you could use that process okay. to address um, the relative homes that meet those standards in order to to um, have funding for that family. So that's the piece that I would definitely look at for that. Okay. And and one other question with regard to that, um, when we're going through our process and we're in the heat of these cases in court, trying to get these children placed, um, is the counties, are the counties being updated on all these processes and the trainings gone out to them so that they know that tribes are moving forward doing this? They have been told that we've had the discussion with them at um, their monthly meeting, as well as um, through some of the um, state process meetings that we've had the statewide work group. Um, doesn't mean it gets down to the to the uh, worker level, though. So right. uh, okay. I think we all have that continued conversation. We have to keep reminding folks of. Okay. But we're, we don't have to use any of our funding for training for any of this. You guys got that covered, right? Exactly. You okay. do not have to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. If you find places where you feel like you're having to do too much in these conversations, reach out to my team. We are more than willing to do trainings in particular areas because we're seeing more of a need as a yeah. part of the outreach. Yeah, so, I, yeah. definitely. Def definitely, I think it's probably a proposed recommendation for some type of an ICWA state conference training or training when you go to the state, entire state, because you've got many counties that are making it very difficult for the tribally approved home process to work, and especially on the emergency placements. Okay, definitely get back to us, because that's, Certainly not the intent. We want to make that work as smoothly as possible. Understanding counties still have jur jurisdiction, but children have the the rights to have as <coughs> least disruptive process as possible, and that's what we want. Uh, their family is there and available. We need to be looking at how we can make that happen. So definitely work with Rebecca and her team. Got it. Thank you. Other questions, comments, thoughts, things that we should, as we move the process forward and we continue to build that we need to look at. Hearing nothing and not seeing, hearing anything. Is there anything in the chat box that I missed, Caitlin? No, no okay. other questions in the chat. Well, based on that, I wanna thank everybody for joining us today and thank you for your questions and your time. We really appreciate it. Bye all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone.